Welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we have a 2019 Mercedes Sprinter 2500 and it is the 12 passenger layout with the high roof. And I've had one of these similar before that was the construction model. It had two rows of seats, just the driver, passenger, and then one bench behind it. This one's got four rows and it actually has insulation all the way back. The other one did not, didn't have windows or anything. So this one's actually quite a bit more pleasant to drive. I think the other one was also a 3500 and this one's a 2500. So that makes a difference. But I mean, look how tall this thing is. It's four wheel drive and I don't know the exact height, but I'm guessing 12 feet. And that includes the air conditioner up there. It's maybe 11 feet without the air conditioner. It does have the six cylinder diesel in it, which is a good enough engine. I mean, it's not the most powerful thing and it has serious turbo lag be below 2000 RPM. But once you get up above that 2000 RPM, it goes really pretty well. Let's uh, take a look in the back. So I took this camping with my family and we took out the back two rows here and we're able to fit a queen size air mattress inside. So it would just barely fit between the wheel wells. It actually like we inflated it in between there. So it kind of curved around the wheel wells. If you had an actual mattress and not an air mattress, you might struggle with that. But so basically we just took out that row and this row and it left us with over eight feet of length behind the second row there. And we were able to fit all four of us and the dog in here, no problem. And uh, things worked out pretty well. So to take out the rear seats, I actually haven't bolted these back on yet. You have to unbolt those on both sides. There's one on each side. And that's only for this last row. So the other rows don't have anything that bolts on there. And then you come down here and pull this lever and the seat will rock back and then you can just lift it up and out except those are very heavy seats so there are tie down points all over back here there's a couple of charging ports i don't know how well that's showing up but you can see one of those on each side and this floor is pretty thick so you have underneath here uh it's kind of hard to see you have about that thick before you get down to the metal floor so the industrial model i had just was down to the bare metal floor there this one has i don't know a solid inch there and that helps with insulation this one doesn't echo nearly as bad and actually drives pretty smooth and then back here i mean there's vents all over there's like 12 vents back here in the rear ac unit um one thing that was interesting to me was the build quality it just seems a little bit more subpar on this one. Things are more, I don't know, just kind of falling apart a little bit. Um, I know it's massive and these are huge panels and all that, but it seems like they could have done a little bit better job with that. There are USB ports. There's one there and that pocket holds your phone pretty well. And same on that side, the next row up, there's one. So there are a few of those throughout. Back here. Um, you can open the door from the inside and close it from the inside, which is nice when we were camping. Um, and then you also have these mesh pockets. Not bad. And when you close it, this is as far as the do doors open, which is nice as well. But when you close it, make sure you close the left side first and then the right side because you have the Mercedes emblem there. So if you close the other side first, you'll hit that Mercedes emblem and likely break it off massive door here but it locks in place so if you're on a hill which we have been many times it locks in place and stays back there till you either push the button or pull the handle on the other side rear seats four middle back middle i guess seats three front middle seats three and then the driver and passenger and it's easy enough to open the side door and just walk through here to get to the front. Uh, that was 
almost more convenient than opening the driver's door as I'm loading kids in here or whatever. Um, does have an emergency exit window. As far as I know, this thing just falls out. So I don't think there's any hinge or anything on the top. Once you pop those two handles and push it, it just falls out. Um, they do classify it as a bus, but it's 12 passenger. So you don't have to have a CDL to drive this. Um, I believe CDL is 16 passenger. Um, let's go ahead, take a look at a few more things and then we'll fire it up. So here, a few things about it. So when we were camping, interestingly enough, the doors rub right here. This front door, when you open and close it, hits right there. And I can show you that. That's what I'm talking about with the build quality stuff. It just, right there, just barely rubbing. Um, things just seem just a hair off in a lot of places. Um, like I said, overall though, it's it was much better than the industrial version. There's a nice little pocket under there. These ones have actually really good seat adjustability. I got my backpack in the way there, but you can adjust your thigh support forward and back. Let's adjust the seat back position so as you roll that and then right here we'll raise and lower the seat and this one raises and lowers the front and right here's your lumbar support but you can move it up and down and in and out so you can put your lumbar support right where you want it which is really great i've been in a lot of vehicles newer vehicles that don't have that um even top trim levels they have just the forward and back adjustment and they don't have the up and down Another thing is the headrests aren't like super far forward as we've been finding in a lot of other vehicles. Um, if you're trying to sit more straight up in a lot of the new vehicles, it will push you forward, um, which is not a comfortable seating position pushing your neck forward. Uh, here's the bottle jack. If you get a flat tire, it does have a full size spare back here. Uh, no hitch on this one, which was interesting. It is a 2500, but no hitch. Um, there are vents. You see the heater vent there on the floor. A few of those throughout as well um, for heating up the passenger compartment. Let's go around to the driver's side. Just climb through here. Try not to get everything too dusty. So this thing is uh interesting so i'm standing straight up i've got another six inches there so plenty of room you have pockets up here Pout, not pockets i don't know if platforms to put stuff on a couple little ones here no mirror on either side and you got a sunglass holder there and all the light switches which is probably getting um, let's start it, see if those go away. There we go. So this is to turn off the light. So when you hit the, uh, open the doors, the lights stay off. This button turns on just these front lights. And this one turns on all these rear ones in the cabin, which was really nice when camping. You can actually just hit this button right here and it turns on all the lights, but it's only on this front one. I wish you had that option on the rear ones too. So we were able to turn it off. So when we open the doors, the lights wouldn't be on attracting the bugs, but not uh, have to be in the darkness the whole time. We just close the door and then hit one of those buttons back there and light it right up. Um, pretty good gas mileage. I'm actually getting a little better than this. This was my last drive this morning on the freeway. I was about 18 and a half, 19 miles per gallon, and then driving the dirt road section and idling here for a few minutes made that go down. Headlights here. Uh, interesting feature as the fog light button the headlights are on um, there are no fog lights on the outside but they kept get the button there and even show that it turns on on the dash but that doesn't do anything so I imagine there is a trim level with the headlights or sorry with the fog lights you hit the middle button it'll fold the mirrors in but I mean they're tiny mirrors anyway so not big deal so only two cup holders here. I know what you're thinking. Sometimes I just need four drinks. So two more up here on the dash. Ah, I know what you're thinking. Sometimes you just have to have five drinks. So one more right there. 
um, and that's just for the driver. If you wanted to steal your passenger seat ones, there's two more there. You can easily reach. Uh, parking brake, good old lever style. This thing's rear wheel drive based. This is the four wheel drive, or they call it all wheel drive button. And then four wheel drive low, you just gotta be in neutral to hit that one. We'll try and do a tiny bit. This thing's so top heavy, I'm nervous to uh, do too much articulation testing and all that stuff. Uh, this one isn't the top trim. You can get big touch screen and stuff here, uh, but it's decently equipped. No satellite radio, little phone pockets there or whatever. And there are, there's a 12 volt charging port there and a USB and these are all USB C's. So uh, you just have to be aware of that. If you're trying to charge a device, you need a USB C. Uh, that's about it. I think on the inside here, uh, oh, I didn't mention these. All the seats, except for the back row, do have two cup holders in each of those sides there. So four cup holders for each of the benches at seat three. Child safety or child anchors, whatever, seat anchors. And they have them on the back too, so you can hook on to them. There's only two per row, so on the outsides, there are the anchors for the child seats. And we did put the child seats in here um they were just fine the forward facing one was a little better because it doesn't stick out quite as far we can still walk through here with the forward facing one the rear facing one we could fit through there but it was a little tight um they do it's kind of uh limit leg room i don't know i mean it's not bad you can see how much room there is there that's pretty good go back a row let me flip these lights on Make it a little easier to see so it's not super tight, but not tons and tons of room. They kind of keep it tighter up here. So there's a little bit more storage room in the back. If you wanted to fill up your diesel right here, there is a gas version of this as well, but for your diesel exhaust fluid, hood latches there. Uh, that's actually a functional hood scoop. This one could be. I wonder if they make a piece for it. I'll show you that in just a second. This hood's pretty heavy and has a different style of latch here. Let's see if I can show you. So you unhook that from up here and it latches on the bottom like that. So a different style, I hadn't seen that before. But right here's that plastic insert. So you could have another hood scoop section there i imagine they do it on this side any water that gets in there is just gonna puddle up there and evaporate from the heat of the engine most likely evaporate out or get sucked in so that runs across this side and into the air box and this thing like i said just a little six cylinder diesel and it's turbocharged you can maybe see the turbo there on top your def fill is here uh at least it's not as bad as Chevy. Uh, the new Chevys have moved it, but the for a few years there, Chevy tried to put theirs. It was kind of like right here, but it, you couldn't reach it because the hood was so long and everything. They made it impossible to get to. It's like they didn't want you to put def in it. But anyway, right here on the front, pretty easy to reach. It does have a step here too, and it's pretty sturdy. <laughs> Makes it easy to climb up here. And it does have a rear view camera, but it's so far up there, it's all the way at the top. And it's kind of weird to see where the edges of the vehicle are. So for some reason, it makes it seem like the vehicle's a lot wider than it is. It does have nice mirrors for that though. So you get these bubble view convex mirrors there that help you see all around this side just a fuse box there the payload capacity 1000 sorry 2778 pounds total vehicle weight 9050 so that's a pretty good payload capacity actually and that kind of explains why it was so bumpy off-road we took it when we took it camping we were down a dirt road we decided to pull in at one of the first campsites we saw rather than go around to the spot we really wanted to go just because it was so bumpy. Kids in the back were not too happy 
and we were just going real slow. It would take us an hour or more to do a 20 minute drive in maybe a uh, TRD Pro or a Jeep Wrangler or something like that, um, just because this thing was so bouncy. That concludes part one of this two-part series on the Mercedes 4x4 Sprinter van. The next one will cover driving and off-roading, so look forward to that one coming up soon. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit subscribe. Be sure to ring the bell so you get notifications. If you give me a thumbs down, be sure to comment down below and let me know why. Have a great day.